Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's your boy, Delightful Kiss Boy, and today I'm showing off a little weekend project I did. Why not? Why not? This might not be your cup of tea, but I don't care, buddy. Now, what are you looking at here? Well, a couple of days ago, I saw a video that was about this uh, game, this cute little game that was a kind of a pen and paper, I guess just pencil and paper, I don't know, um, little playable game that uh, you get a little notebook and uh, you play golf by rolling dice and uh, it's called Paper Apps Golf and I thought it looked uh, pretty cool and fun and I was like, you know what? I want to make a solver for that. So that is what you are looking at right now. This will uh, allow you to play the game uh, trying to get the fewest strokes he he possible uh, for a given game mode and a given map. All right, so this is one of the example maps that I have booted up here uh, that's shown in the video. I'll link the video in the description. Uh, go check it out. It's a really cool little product, and I think they did a really cool thing, you know, with it. Looks like a lot of fun, and uh, so this isn't intending to, like, you know, spoil the fun of the game. I just thought it was fun to write a solver for it. So I'm going to show it off. Now, the first way you can play is called speed golf. And speed golf is actually like, it's deterministic here. So let me just show you what I'm talking about. So speed golf, what you can do is you can move one space, three spaces, or if you're on the fairway, which is this green area, the darker green area, I should say, you can move six spaces. So the entire thing is deterministic. There's no dice rolls. So that is a way to play the game. And uh, so I was like, all right, well, if you're playing speed golf, what is the best way to get from the ball, so this little white dot down here, that's the ball, that's where you start off, uh, and you're trying to get to the hole up here, which is this black dot up here, right, in the uh, fewest number of strokes possible. So, if it's speed golf, well, let's see what we're working with here. So, the way that I figured this out is in the code, I made a function that generates essentially a heat map, which will show you uh, all of from any position on the grid here how many strokes it's going to take from get to get from that point to the hole so let's uh, overlay the um, heat map here which is a uh, colorblind friendly BT dubs I mean I can turn off the overlay so we just see the heat map here a little more clear that way but uh, let's leave it like this so we can see the ball down here so this is saying that we can get from this ball to that hole in six strokes all right and uh, what I can do is, I mean, so basically zero strokes from the hole, you can see rating, radiating out from here we have ones, right? Because you can always move one, you go right into the hole, but you'll notice we can only move one and three, so why is this spot here a one? Well, if you overshoot the hole by one, it still counts, it goes into the, uh, the hole. If you overshoot it by more than that, then it, it doesn't go into the hole because you quote unquote hit it too hard. Uh, you also notice that all the trees are blacked out here. Uh, that's because uh, you cannot land on a tree. You can only shoot over trees, and you can only shoot over trees if you're on the fairway. So the fairway, once again, being this darker green area. Um, otherwise, you cannot go through trees at all. Now this over here, this is the sand trap. And the sand trap basically makes it so that um, you can move one or you can move two instead in speed golf. So. With, when I generate this heat map, what I can do is I can essentially go and say, okay, well, what, you know, given all of the different possible moves I could make from any position, what is the, uh, you know, quickest route to get from here to there? And so let's go ahead and display that. And so my, uh, you know, my app is saying that this is the quickest way to get from uh, the ball to the hole. And uh, we move up three, uh, and then we hit using the fairway shot. Uh, six from here. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six. We end up in the rough, and from the rough you can only hit one or three. So we hit three here, we hit three into the sand trap, we shoot two out of the sand trap, and then we shoot three into the hole. And that right there is uh, basically uh, six strokes right there. Now, uh, speed golf is not the recommended way to play. The way that they uh, want you to play instead is uh, using uh, dice golf, is what it's called. So let's take a look at that real quick. Um, so with dice golf instead, let me just uh, put the dice on so we can see. You're going to be rolling a dice here, and that's going to determine how far you can move on a given turn. So basically, you roll the dice, and then you can move that distance. If you shoot from the fairway, you get one added to the distance that you're shooting. 
If you shoot from the sand trap, you get one subtracted from whatever you're shooting, but you can always move at least one. Um, it's the same sort of thing with the trees here. Oh, I, I should mention the slope here. If you land on the slope, then um, your the ball rolls into the uh, cell, the, the point in the grid that the uh, slope is pointing to. And so up here, uh, now we have a new mechanic. It's called mulligans. So basically mulligans, what they're going to allow you to do is if you didn't like a roll that you got, you can re-roll it, which is an interesting mechanic for computing, you know, optimal way to get from this, you know, ball to the hole. So let's take a look at the heat map now. And you'll notice it has decimals now. That's because we are now computing the expected value of um, each of these spots. So it's not deterministic anymore. So even though you can't, you know, something's not going to take 2.2 shots. It's saying that it's usually going to take two shots, but occasionally it's going to take like three shots or more. It's variable. It's basically the expected value of given the dice roll, um, how many strokes it's going to take for you to get from this position to like the hole, for example. And you'll see here that it's actually 5.2 for dice golf, which is um, lower than it is for speed golf. So we should usually be able to get to the hole in five shots. Um, but then mulligans are interesting though because they affect our probability. Um, and what I've done is I've essentially computed each of these maps for all of the different mulligan values here. So you can see here, um, we have 5.2 here, but if we had, if we took a mulligan, then our next shot, it goes up to 5.4 strokes. It's computing that by kind of doing this. So we have six mulligans left. If we instead reduce it to five mulligans, then all of a sudden um, our value has gone up to 5.4 and all of the values on the grid have actually gone up because we've lost one of our mulligans. We can continue doing this. Here we have four left and you can see it gets even worse. And we keep doing it. Three left, two left, one left, and then zero left. Our initial, if we had no mulligans to start off with, our initial expected number of strokes to get to the hole is actually seven now, up from 5.2. So uh, you can kind of see here the trend, it kind of, uh, you know, creeps in. It, it's kind of radiating out of this uh, hole here, but um, basically the more mulligans that you have, the fewer strokes it should take you to get to the hole. And uh, there you have it. So without further ado, let's just play around with the solver telling me exactly what I should do to maximize or minimize the number of strokes it's going to take me to get to the hole. Well, let's do a little roll here. So we roll. And now these are all of the different little spaces that we can go. And so the uh, solver is saying, okay, you should move to this space over here uh, when you roll a two. And you'll notice this spot is actually three spaces away, excuse me, from uh, where we are right now, which is this ball. But it's three spaces away because uh, when, you're, when you hit off the fairway, it adds one to the uh, distance that you can shoot. So we can go from here to there. So let's just click over there. So we've moved one, we have one stroke now, and now we're up here. And uh, you know we can take a look at the grid again, and uh, let's take a look and see what our next recommendation is. We roll, and now you'll notice that none of the spots on the grid are in red. So none of them are recommended. Instead, what the um, algorithm is doing is recommending me to mulligan. Now let's take a look at why that is. So from this spot here, you can see, if we take a mulligan, our expected number of strokes goes down to uh, goes up to 4.1 from where we are here. Now, you'll notice though that out of all of the moves that we could make, the best move that we could make is going out to this spot over here, which has an expected number of strokes of 3.2. So basically from this spot, it should take us 3.2 strokes to get to the hole. Now you're th gonna think like, okay, well 3.2 is less than 4.1. Why wouldn't we just take it? Well, it's because it takes one stroke to get from this spot to this spot over here. So essentially what this is, is it's actually like a 4.2, which is greater than the expected value if we take the mulligan. So what we should do here is we should take the mulligan and see what we get if we roll again. And we roll again, and once again, it's telling us to re-roll. We got a two this time, and none of these spots are good. You know, we can move up to a 3.9, that's our best option. But once again, 4.9 is greater than 4.3, so it's saying re-roll, baby. We re-roll again, we get a three this time. And uh, once again, it's telling us to re-roll. It's a 4.5 here. Our best option here is 3.6. 
uh, which is, you know, 4.6 with the extra stroke added, which is higher than our mulligan value. So we'll go ahead and roll again. And this time it finally takes. It says, okay, that's a good enough roll. And we're moving to this spot here, which is a 3.2, essentially a 4.2 compared to the 4.8 value uh, when we mulligan. So we'll go ahead and take this one and uh, we will roll from here. So we roll again and we get a, th uh, we roll a one. Um, and we're on the fairway, so we can still move two spaces, but it's saying, all right, that's, that's dog shit. We want to re-roll that. So let's re-roll again. We get a five this time. We're like, all right, that's good enough. We're going from uh, here where if we had a mulligan value of 3.8 to a 2.3. So an effective like 3.3 strokes by moving there. And we'll go ahead and do that and boom. And uh, we're getting pretty close to the hole now. Let's go ahead and roll it again and boom. We get a two. And so uh, it's saying, okay, go ahead and take that. Now, two is a low roll, but what it does is it lines us up pretty well with the hole here, right? So we have a pretty good shot. If we just go right here of getting to the hole, you'll see we have an expected number of strokes of 1.5 from this position. Our mulligan value is 2.5, meaning that if we mulligan, you know, we're expecting to have 2.5 strokes, whereas if we go here, we're also expecting to have 2.5 strokes. So we may as well just take this and save our mulligan. And so we go ahead and do that. And uh, let's see if we can get in the hole. And we roll, and it's a six, which is uh, overshooting the hole. Uh, we can only go over by one. So we need one, two, three, four, or a five from here to get a hole in one from this position. And uh, let's go ahead and roll again. We get a three, which is just short. And what it's saying is we have one mulligan left, but they're saying, all right, three, that's good enough. Our mulligan value is a 2.1, but uh, we have a guaranteed win from one if we just take the three and, and just take it, right? So uh, it's pretty close here, but, um, you know, we don't play greedy. We're just going to go ahead and go right on there. And uh, now from here, we just have a guaranteed win. We go right on into the hole, baby. So we finish this one in one, two, three, four, five, six strokes, which is, uh, let's see, what was the initial expected... Uh, 5.2. So we got a little unlucky there, uh, specifically, I think kind of around, um, well, earlier on, it took a lot of our mulligans to get to this spot here. Um, so, you know, 5.2 expected value. We, uh, we got six, but that's how it goes sometimes, baby. Anyway, if you'd like me to, uh, you know, explain, um, a little bit more about how I'm computing these numbers and generating this heat map, et cetera, et cetera. I could do a longer video where I kind of explain it. There's also a couple of variations of how you can play this, and there's, you know, an infinite number of maps, but uh, I'm just kind of gauging interest on this. Like I said, I was going to be doing this anyway, even if I wasn't making a video about it, but I think it's a cool little game, um, and so I don't really care if people don't care about this. I have fun with it, um, but if people do care, I can keep making some stuff about it and explaining it. Um, and, uh, yeah, it should be good. Now, I'm hesitant to post the code on GitHub just because I don't want to take away from, like, their business because, you know, you can technically play the game with this app, which, so I don't know. I've, I'd have to see how I'm feeling about that because I don't want to take business away from them. It seems like a pretty cool company with a cool concept, and I don't want to, like, it's like, oh, this is the electronic version of the exact, it's like exactly the opposite point of what they're trying to do. This is meant to be a solver. This is not meant to be a replacement for their product. All right. So I'll think about releasing the code. But in the meantime, I think I'm, I'm probably not going to. And I can, I can explain how it works rather than releasing it. But uh, let me know what you think about that. Let me know what you think about the whole video. Hope you had fun. Hope it was interesting. And uh, I'll talk to you later. And I'll get back to the gambling and buckshot content, baby. We love that. Probably some other board game analysis stuff, too. I don't know. I like doing shit like this. It's fun. Bye-bye.